Welcome to this week's video. For this week, I'm going to be doing my wrap up for the month of January. Um, one absolute favorite, favorite book. Uh, two DNA, three DNFs. <laughs> um, my favorite one was a paperback and the three DNFs were a, another paperback, an ebook, and an audiobook. But I've been in a slump with uh, Audible, with audiobooks for a while now. And this one, I actually got pretty, like halfway through it, I would say, about halfway, something. I got a big chunk into it, but uh, it uh, let me down. So uh, let's start with the, with the audiobook first. Uh, it was, Lauren Dane's The Best Kind of Trouble. And there we go. And I started off really liking it, really sort of think hopeful about it. Um, it's about a, a librarian and a rock star who had a fling um, like eight years ago or something. And um, they she's now working uh yeah she's working as a librarian um in the small town where he and the majority of the members of his band i believe are from they're uh they're brothers i think i know at least one of them is his brother um and so they end up finding each other again and um she is sort of like doesn't want to get involved in like that lifestyle and she, you know, she sort of like made a new life for herself and she just likes to like have her life be quiet and, and um, at peace, but happy pants. So I liked it because Lauren Dane's books don't really grab me often because they're usually, I find her heroines pretty much all the same. They're all these tattooed sort of like badass quote unquote angry um bitches unlikable yet like i don't like her heroines but this one you know she was she was this librarian and she was like cool and she was like funny and like she was like sweet and it was all going great um until we fall back into the cliche of she was this tattooed wild child when she was younger and i was just like I thought we got it. We were getting away from our heroines. I, uh, but fine, I was willing to go with it. Um, and I found <laughs> James in the beginning to be uh, the hero's name is James. I cannot remember the heroine's name because, like I said, all her heroines seem to be the same to me. Um, he's he definitely has more of the happy pants than she does. And when he sees her again, it's sort of like, oh my god, I'm getting like the second chance with this girl that I love, that I am in love with. Um, and he sort he comes on a little strong, uh, and she's constantly in the beginning being like, you know, like, no, I'm, I'm not going to be involved in that again. You know, you and I, like, we were like a one time or like one time thing. We had like two great weeks. Um, while you were like on the road and it was fun, but um, I don't want that for my life. Um, and that is whole, her whole big thing of like, that's her issue of like not wanting to be a part of his like rock star lifestyle. Fine. Um, but yeah, I found him to be like a little bit pushy in the beginning. Um, like if a guy, no matter like how hot he was, kept like showing up at my work and kept like trying to get me to go out with him uh even though i kept saying no i would be put off by that like it, it, it wouldn't be a case of like him finally wearing me down and i gave in i, I don't know I, I didn't really like that very much but james he, he to be fair okay we'll go with the fantasy we'll go with the fantasy this is like we'll go with the romance and he was so darn likable and so like 
just sweet. He was like this giant, sexy, happy puppy. And I just, I loved him. I just, if, again, people who piss me off when those who say like, oh, that women can't tell the difference between reality and fantasy, uh, and that's why romance ruins relationships and blah, blah, blah. Bullshit. I know perfectly well for myself that if a guy came on as strong as James did in my real life, I would have like, no, there is no way that I would go for that. In the context of this fantasy romance, or not, it's not a fantasy romance. In the context of this romance, we'll go with the fantasy. Um, it was adorable. <laughs> um, so, yeah, they end up uh, having a sexual relationship. I don't know why, because she has... I understand Happy Pants, but she is so adamant about, like, not being part of, like, his lifestyle and not being part of, like, his... He just, she doesn't want a relationship with him. She just wants to constantly have sex with him. And yet... Why? Like, why? If you don't want to have a relationship with someone, one night stands are great no no um judgment on that but why are you constantly having sex with them and and not just it's not just the sex because i know like friends with benefits is a thing i don't think it can ever work because feelings and booty calls are a thing again i don't think it could ever work as like a long-term arrangement because feelings because we're human beings and not robots and like not um animals um so why are you letting yourself become involved with this man when you don't want to become involved with this man i just again like i've i read books where it's that kind of like i don't want to be in love with you but i am and blah blah and i just feel like They've done the, the development of that better because once they're having sex and, you know, like once they're like enjoying each other's company and clearly like they like each other, I just, I don't understand what she thinks is going to happen as this goes on like he's in at at some point he introduces her to her family to his family to his brothers and i think that's where i uh dnf'd it because i just found the meeting with the family two reasons one if you're only wanting this to be like a sexual relationship why are you meeting with his family like why did you agree to that and then like she's gonna turn around like again i i dnf this so i don't know if this happened but then she's gonna like turn around and when he wants more she's gonna be like no i told you i didn't want a relationship blah blah blah, blah. and yet she's like meeting with his family and it's i don't know if like later the conflict's gonna be like oh you know she's look falling in love with him again or what have you but it's going to be this dragged out like no i don't want to be a part of your lifestyle blah, blah, blah. i don't want to be in a relationship with you i don't because of your lifestyle i don't want to be a rock star's girlfriend and all the like paparazzi and the blah, blah, blah. i don't want that blah, blah, blah. stay out of his pants stay out of his pants how hard is that again i don't know if that's what's going to be the conflict I don't know because I DNF'd it. Um, I just, I found the meeting with the family so cliche. They're like, the meeting with the family is pretty much the meeting with the family of every single uh, small town contemporary romance. 
where they all love her and they're like all like teasing and broing and like it you know i just it just it didn't work for me it didn't work for me and it's a shame because for the first third or half or however far i got i was enjoying it i was enjoying it i was willing to go with the fantasy of you don't want to you know you don't want to you say you don't want to be with this guy but yet you're uh sleeping with him because he's so damn darling and just adorable and and yeah i was willing to go with it um until sort of they got like into like deeper into the sexual relationship because then i felt like her protests like in what likely protests that were going to come later were going to be so stupid because she's sleeping with him at this point why why not why not like you chose to sleep with this man who happens to be a rock star and now you're like i don't want to have a relationship with you because you're a rock star again i don't know if that was going to be the conflict i'm just assuming because yeah and then like the, the meeting with the family was just so every other small town girlfriend meets the family kind of thing i i, I would just like to see a family that granted when you're meeting somebody new you're always on your best behavior you try to be but um i just would like to see where like maybe somebody didn't like her in his family um maybe there were uh there's like sniping in the family where like people are like mad at each other and they're not all like fawning over her and like oh welcome to the family and just yeah so that Sadly, it didn't work for me, but I'm encouraged because it worked for me more than the other audiobooks that I've tried in the past couple of months. So maybe I'm coming out of the slump, please go on. Maybe, we shall see. Um, I don't have another audible audiobook lined up yet, but um, I'm going to be picking one soon, so we'll see how that goes. Uh, my next DNF, oh, let's do the ebook first. My next DNF was a Daffodils by Alex Martin. Go. And I liked it. I didn't love it and I DNF'd it because the hero turned out to be an ass butt. Um, I took some notes so that I can like be able to give you more of an overview um, of why I didn't like it. So we have Katie and she starts off as this maid for this family and there's um, a guy in the family, I think his name is Charles? I think his name was Charles, yeah. Uh, who is sort of like that, you know, like rich boy chasing after the maids kind of guy. And um, they end up not, well, they end up being kind of in, definitely in a compromising position because Katie does, does a stupid. And um, she, she, Charles has a sister and she ends up changing into like the sister's clothes. I, I think like the sister gives her the clothes or something or she ends up like sneaking into the sister's bedroom and like trying on the clothes and like trying to do her hair trying to see like what it would be like to be rich something like that which is weird which I, I could understand if the maid was you'd fired for just doing that uh but Charles you know like comes along comes into the room and like sees her and is like so like amazed at like how beautiful she is and blah 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 and is all like flirty bro guy and um ends up she excuse me she ends up kissing him i believe um even like she says she seems to like not be in love with him 
but she kisses him and then is caught by, of course, his mother um, and I think the sister. Um, and uh, she's uh, fired. And so her relation, her reputation is going to be, of course, ruined because olden times. Um, and she has this friend, Jem, who is completely in love with her, but she just does not feel that way about him. But um, she knows that he's in love with her and she knows that like he wants, everybody's expecting that the two of them are gonna get married, but Katie doesn't wanna get married. She wants to like go and like have adventures and you know, live like this life outside of their small town where everybody is pretty much just getting married and having babies. She doesn't want that for herself. She wants more, but her reputation gets ruined and uh, she knows that she's not going to be able to go and like have these adventures and For some reason I, I, I don't know why I mean, I think it was something along the lines of She couldn't get another job so she wouldn't have the money to go off and like do these adventures if she didn't uh, have a job and wasn't able to save money, but because of what happened with the Smythe family, she um, was definitely not gonna be able to get another job because the Smythe family wasn't gonna give her a recommendation because she was smooching on their son. Um, and of course, Charles doesn't, you know, pay for anything. You know, it's, o it's only her reputation that's ruined. Uh, Charles goes off to the war and okay, fine. Um, so her reputation is ruined and they her family her mom comes up with the idea that the only way to save her reputation is if she got married okay at this point she's sort of katie's disappointed but sort of resigned to you know i have to save my reputation and but she's like who's gonna marry me and then jem's like yoohoo i'm over here hello i do it i volunteer she, he's like katniss in the hunger games i volunteer i volunteer so katie's like fine <laughs> i'll marry jim and um she she makes the best of this uh marriage and uh slowly you know she actually does end up falling in love with her husband and it's uh lovely and it's nice um and and i really enjoyed like that bit of it like them like growing and like falling in love with each other the first thing that i did not like was this is supposed to be again like i'm fine with like different points of view and uh like the sort of like epic saga books and stuff and this supposedly is like one of those epics i think there's like six books in it this was book one. This is Daffodils by Alex Martin, the Catherine Wheel series. Um, and this was book one. Oh, I don't... Six or eight books, something like that. Um, but I I wanted it to be Katie, Katie's point of view and our gem. There's this weird Reverend Lionel guy who clearly wants him some Katie. And he's just constantly insinuating himself into their lives, um, into the story. We're constantly getting his point of view. I don't know why. I, I, I don't know why. I didn't like him. He read off really creepy to me. Katie and Jem end up, Katie end up, ends up getting pregnant. And they have this beautiful baby girl, Florence. But um, sh baby Florence dies of, I think, uh, typhoid? Something like that. She dies of some kind of, like, old-timey disease. Um, and it's heartbreaking. And it unfortunately drives this wedge between Jem and, and Katie, where they're not able to kind of share their grief with each other. So they're, they're, they're kind of like, they kind of like retreat to their separate corners. Um, until I think it's Jem's mother <laughs> kind of like me metaphorically knocks their heads together and is like the two of you have a life that you're building 
and you need to get back to building their that life you need to get back to uh the love that you have for each other and this marriage and um you need to um put you know like put your loss sort of like in the past and look to the future so for a while that's all great and it's it's you know like sweet like sort of watching them like work their way back to each other and um i i really really enjoyed that then katie gets sick katie gets sick and i think she gets not necessarily what baby florence had i think she gets pneumonia and and Jem is like distancing starts like pulling away from her because i don't know if like he's afraid that like she's gonna die you know like, like his baby died but i can understand that but what made me dnf this book was up to this point i liked katie um I liked Jem, loved Jem, loved Katie. I thought Jem was like this darling little cinnamon roll who like loved his wife and has always loved his wife and now was, you know, like having his dream realized of loving his wife and, and you know, like having a life with the woman that he's always loved. Well, then Katie gets pneumonia. And, um, but she recovers. However, she's not recovering as quickly as Jem would like. She, he thinks that she's taking too long to recover and he finds that she's, um, you know, like she doesn't look as healthy anymore and because, you know, she's still recovering from like nearly dying from pneumonia. Um, and he's afraid to like make love to her even though like because of like what happened with baby florence and now that like she uh katie's better now you know she wants to get back to you know like rebuilding their marriage and like being intimate again and like you know being with her husband and and you know like actually like having a real marriage um but jim thinks that uh she doesn't look as healthy anymore and uh he doesn't want to be intimate with her because uh, he's afraid that uh, she's not as healthy anymore and so she can't handle his his love making or what have you um, and he finds it like he's not attracted to her what I mean what I mean he doesn't even want to like hold her or like be in not even like sex but like just you know like you can still like be intimate with each other and like be loving with each other without it like leading to sex and you could like very easily explain like you know okay like we can do some stuff but we can't do like other stuff because like i'm i'm still worried that like you're you know still sick and well you're not sick but like you're still like recovering and stuff but no he's like saying like that like we get like his point of view and he's all like, you know, like she's not, I don't find, in old time you speak, basically, I don't find her like sexy anymore. And um, I'm feeling like, like as she recovers, she's gonna put like this pressure on me. So what does Jem decide is the solution? He's going to enlist. He's going to enlist in the war. I think this is the first, first world war, I think. It's either the first and second world war, I don't remember. Um, but yeah, he's gonna go enlist and fight in the war. He's gonna go leave his wife because he he's feeling pressure from her and, and he's not um, attracted to her. So he, he thinks that it's better to go and possibly die than stay with his wife who he supposedly has loved all his life. And that's when I DNF the book. I was like, Fuck you, Jem. I hope you can die in the war. Like, his co-character did a complete 180 for no reason at all. No damn reason at all. 
And so I, I DNF'd it. Absolutely hated it. Hated what they did with Jen's character. Uh, so yeah, that was the ebook that I DNF'd. Uh, the paperback that I DNF'd, sadly, was A Harlequin Presents Claiming His Out of Out of Bounds Bride by Annie West. Um, now this one is uh, Olivia and Alessandro. Alessandro and Olivia is supposed to be marrying Alessandro's brother um, for reasons. Uh, it has to do with something like their families merging business and what have you. Um, but Alessandro's brother um, ends up fall falling in love with a woman and not necessarily like at the altar, but pretty much jilting Olivia at the altar. Like I think there's like a day before the wedding <laughs> and um, he uh, dumps her via text or or via voicemail uh, saying that um, he, he's fallen in love with somebody else and he can't go through with the wedding um, okay fine because like Olivia was not I think that the brother's name was Carlo uh, the, um, they were not in love with each other. They were friends and they were just getting married to do this business merger. Fine. Uh, so Alessandro, Carlo's brother, has sort of always been attracted to Olivia and um, always, I think, been in love with. I, I, yeah, he's been in love with her since like forever. And so when Carlo dumps her, Alessandro, again, is like, I volunteer! I volunteer! Katniss from The Hunger Games. Um, and so Olivia's like, okay, weird, but okay. Uh, because she really wants this business merger. Um, now, I DNF'd it because it just wasn't... I just wasn't invested enough in Olivia's reasons for wanting to get married. I, again, I love marriage of convenience stories, but I felt like Olivia's reasons, like she wanted a place in the company and something like she wanted to like end up running the company that I think like her father ran and for company. She wanted marriage for company. And I just didn't feel like in this day and age that that was a strong enough reason to just marry a dude. I, and I just, I, I don't know what it was because again, like I've read marriage of convenience stories before and I've liked them, but just did not, did not work for me. And so I, I DNF'd it, which made me sad because, um, yeah, I, you know, I love my Harlequin Presents. Now, now we get to the book that I loved. And I'm not surprised that I loved because I loved her first book that I read. And I loved this one. And it's Anne Gracie's His Captive Lady. No, so you can see the whole thing. Yeah. Does it have a... No. No. Um... She wrote the, yeah, The Stolen Princess, which I have on my keeper shelf because I adore that book. Um, that one is still like the gold standard for me, even though I really, really love this one. But it's just a little below The Stolen Princess for me. Not for any like, I couldn't tell you like specifically why, but I wait, no. The Stolen Princess for me is higher in my estimation because of darling little Nikki. That little boy Nikki. I, oh, I adore that child so, so much. So that's sort of what elevates it. Just a smidge higher, but I still loved and adored his captive lady. Um, and I wrote the notes. I wrote the notes. So we have Nell and Harry, and Harry is, um, a bastard. 
Harry is Gabe's uh, brother, I believe, from Gabe is the hero in The Stolen Princess. So we get, in, in this one, we get his brother Harry's story. Um, and Harry's big thing is, oh, I want to marry, you know, a, a an heiress or, a, or a, a noble lady so that I can, like, be uh, legitimized and, and um, you know, have a high standing in society kind of thing. He doesn't care if he's in love with the, his wife, that, that doesn't matter. He just wants to marry, like, a noble lady. Um, Nell is a noble lady, but uh, Nell has fallen on some hard times. Um, and when they first meet, she looks pretty, um, down, downtrodden, and they meet in, like, this rainstorm, and, um, uh, Harry, of course, does not know that Nell is this, you know, noble woman, um, and they meet, and, um, he, like, gives her his gloves, and he's, like, all, like, sweet and, and, like, nice, but they don't, they just like meet. They don't actually like talk or anything, uh, because Harry, I think, has to go somewhere. <laughs> but um, <clears throat> yeah, uh, so he's he's there for her, sort of like they meet and then like they sort of like go off and are thinking like that they're never going to see each other again. Then Harry, I think, decides that he wants to buy a house, and turns out that the house that he's buying is Nell's old house, and. Nell does not realize when she comes back to her home after being somewhere uh, that the house is being, um, has been sold. Um, so she's like, of course, all sad. And there's like Aggie, the housekeeper, who's like awesome. Um, and so she and Harry like see each other again. And they're like, oh, you know, hot, you know, how, how is it you and all this stuff. And then Harry learns that she is the daughter of the house. Um, that um, lost her house because her father, her father was a terrible, horrible gambler and lost it in a some kind of game, I think a, a card game or something. And so I think some guy is coming to buy it and then, but like Harry ends up buying it from uh, that guy and um, is sort of like Nell oh like why don't you come work for me and Nell is like uh no <laughs> because um, I I can't stay here because I have the things to go do but she will not tell him what those things are um, but he at this point already like has the happy pants and like you know doesn't want to let her go and um, He's like, well, like, I know that, like, you're having um, a hard time and stuff. So, like, why don't I, I'm going to save you by marrying you. And she's like, thanks, but no thanks. And so um, he's, like, really confuzzled as to, like, why she don't want Mary. Why she don't want Mary me. Um, and uh, we we sort of learn, we learn that um, why Nell doesn't want to marry Harry is because she wants to go to London uh, to look for her baby daughter that her father stole from her um, and so she does not know like what's happened to the baby the father stole from her and then the father ended up dead dead and sans baby so we have a dead father, the baby's missing. Nell is like desperately trying to search for her daughter. Um, and she doesn't want to tell Harry this because uh, she doesn't want, like she thinks that Harry's like this, you know, high society guy and um, Harry like won't understand and he'll shun her because she had a daughter out of wedlock and all that stuff. There's, um, there's some really like great scenes with guys who I assume will be like book uh, have like their own books because um, they're sort of like they're the, the brothers um, Harry's brothers I believe I believe they're brothers um, there's Gabe from like the first book and then um, 
there's Harry, and then there's this guy, Rafe. Um, and then I think there's also Ethan. I'm not sure if Ethan's a brother or just their friend. But um, one of my favorite lines from Rafe is, um, Rafe is sort of like this, this poshy sort of like dresses, always sort of like wants to like dress like really fancy kind of thing and, and um, sort of like has that reputation of being like, I don't know how to, how to explain it in English, but in Portuguese, the expression is, I cred non talks. Like, I'm too fancy for you people. Like you, you like little peasants stay down there kind of thing. He sort of has that like vibe about him, but he's endearing and he's sweet. And um, one of my favorite lines that like I wrote down was um, when they're, they're gonna be like working on something. They're doing, I'm not sure if it was like work in the field or something. And like Ethan like wants them to help him. And then Harry's like, um, doesn't want to help him because, um, and I quote, um, I remember work. I don't like it. It makes you dirty. <laughs> and that line just like made me laugh. I love that line a lot. Um, so Nell leaves Harry and they think that like, she's like, he's like, oh, you know, she, um, refused my proposal. Um, and so he thinks that like, he, she's never gonna, he's never gonna see her again. But they end up seeing each other at this uh, party at this woman's house, Mrs. B, Mrs. Beersley, um, because Nell um, is gets a job with this Mrs. Mrs. Beersley, Beersley as her companion to because she needs to get to London and she does not have the monies, so she allows herself to be just berated and belittled by this old shrew mrs Beer beersley um and this woman's just awful and nell just takes it and uh harry watches at this party as nell is just belittled and he is like fuming and raging <laughs> about like this treatment that nell is receiving at the hands of this woman there's this one at the point where like Nell realizes that Harry's there and like she's trying to avoid him but he won't let her avoid him so he's like you know like come and like meet with me secretly here um and so Nell to get him off her back kind of thing like agrees to go meet with him but of course happy pants feelings and they end up kissing and Miss Beersley ends up finding them and is oh my god like i can't believe like i let such a loose woman um in my employ and how dare you and um i should have expected you know nothing less um and here you are with this man who is like a, a he's a bastard and don't you know about like his family and blah 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 and he's she's just like tearing into harry and Nell now is fuming on like harry's behalf and so she he and she ends up like slapping <laughs> miss uh, mrs beardsley um so that was really funny because like they're both like sort of like defending each other um and sort of like proving that there is more of like than just like the happy pants and i love that scene so harry basically tells her okay like you don't have to put up with this bitch. <laughs> I will take you to London. Like, I will, you know, like, she, you don't have a job anymore. Uh, and she's like, yeah, because of you. Because you dragged me off to meet you in secret. And blah, blah, blah. Um, and so he's like, okay, let me make it up to you. Come with me and I'll, like, I'll take you to London. Do whatever, like, you have to do. And she's like, I can't just go off. With, to London with you. Reputation and olden times. So he's like, fine. Listen, just marry me. You know, you can do whatever you want to do. It'll be a marriage in name only if you want, blah, blah, blah. And she's like, okay. Maybe I can do this and still go and like do what I have to do and like find my daughter and he doesn't have to know shit. Um, but she ends up 
telling him sort of as a way to kind of like throw him off and be like, okay, maybe if I tell him, then he won't want to marry me and will drop this ridiculous idea. So she tells him about uh, her little girl, little girl Tori and how she's looking for her. And, you know, she's had this baby out of wedlock and um, don't you like not want to marry me now because I'm soiled goods. And Harry is like, I want to marry you even more and protect you and like be everything for you and I'll help you find your daughter and blah, blah, blah. And Nell is like, oh, the happy pets of the fields. What is this man? What is this man who is like wanting to, who doesn't, is, is not like throwing me into the street because I had a baby out of wedlock. He actually accepts me. What is this? Uh, we have a little bit of um, a subplot with Ethan which I normally do not like in my romances when there's a point of view outside of Harry, of uh, the hero and the heroine. I normally don't like, but because it's Anne Gracie and because I love the Stolen Princess so much, we got a little bit of Ethan and um, Car Caroline? I think it was Caroline who was the hero heroine in the Stolen Princess. Because we got her book, because, because we got her um, T, I think it was her nanny or her teacher, Tibby. There was this little thing going on between Ethan and Tibby in The Stolen Princess, and it continues a bit in um, His Captive Lady. And so I was okay with that because it didn't take away from um, Nell and Harry's story. Um, and it was, t it was so sweet. It was, uh, Ethan was writing to Tibby and sort of like, he was, you know, he wanted to learn sort of how to write so that he could write to Tibby. So he ends up like making a deal with this vicar, uh, who was going to teach him how to write, uh, in exchange for Ethan always coming over and playing chess with him. And that was so, so sweet. Um, I loved sort of that little subplot with Ethan and Tibby and I accepted it and I went with it even though I don't like usually like extra point of view views in my romance besides the hero and hero, hero and heroine uh, but and and Gracie gets a pass um so we got that little subplot story which was lovely when Harry finds out about uh baby baby Tori he you know wants to know who is this guy who like got you pregnant and abandoned you and she doesn't want to tell him for nothing no way, no how, no howdy doody. Um, so they, um, they get, they get engaged. And so like they're, they're planning the wedding. Um, they're planning the wedding and, uh, they haven't been intimate yet. Like this is a, not necessarily a slow burn, but, um, it, it takes a while for for the love scene, for the first love scene. And, but it's like, it's beautiful, like leading up to it because um, Nell has this issue with like sleepwalking. And when she sleepwalks, she's, she's always like having this, dream, these dreams about like looking for her daughter and searching for her daughter. So when she's sleepwalking, she's like trying to like leave the house to like go find her daughter. Um, and like Harry is like freaked out about this at first, but um, he manages to like help her with it and figure out that like the only way to keep her from sleepwalking is if he sleeps with her, like actually like takes her and like keeps her like in like his bed with her, like to have somebody with her so that she doesn't like get up because she he tried to like put her back in her own bed and um like five minutes later, she's up and sleepwalking again and like trying to leave the house. So he's like, okay, I hope she doesn't freak out, but I'm gonna bring her into my bed and, and keep her with me so that I can keep her from getting up out of bed and sleepwalking. Um, unfortunately, and she wakes up, she freaks the f out that a man is in bed with her. And we learn that 
it's because the father, Tori's father, her baby Tori's father is a man that raped her. And she shares this with Harry. And he's like, I want to know who did it. And, uh, you know, I, I want to know who this is. And I want to kill him and blah, 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 blah. Of course, she's like, uh, nope, I'm not telling you that. And um, I was worried that his constant wanting to know who it was, was going to um, hurt their relationship. I was like, I could understand him wanting to know, but I was like, if she doesn't want to tell you, leave it alone. It happened to her. She has the right to tell you what she wants and she has the right to keep to herself what she doesn't want to tell you. Um, but some when he's like with his brothers at some point and like think like it's around like when they're like planning the wedding they're doing something and they find out harry finds out who it was who it was that um that raped nell and it was this man named sir Irwin. so of course he goes after sir Irwin, and sir Irwin is just this piece of shit just this vile piece of shit um and of course that uh that we learn uh from i think well first harry tries to kill sir Irwin because of course he would but um nell and the brothers stop him from killing sir Irwin, and sir Irwin runs off after getting the jesus mary and joseph beat out of him by harry and runs to a street into the street and gets run over by a reindeer. No, gets run over by a carriage uh, and dies. So I, I was okay with that. I would have liked Harry to have killed him, but I understand Harry, prison, we don't want that. Okay, fine. This way, Sir Irwin dies and, and we're, we're all good. Um, there is a heartbreaking scene before that that I wanted to mention where, um, Nell and Harry, they're going from like place to place in London and he's helping her try to find their daughter and they get to this one place where, um, they, they somehow are led to believe that baby Tori died um and it's just heartbreaking I <coughs> I was hoping that it wasn't true but at the same time I was kind of like that's something that like I really I've ne I would have never have seen before where like you're looking for your child and you learn that like your child is dead uh, that would have been like an inter interesting turn if it actually like that was just the fact that that's what happened um i don't know how i would have felt but it would have been like something that hasn't really like been done before where like at least that i'm thinking that i can think of off the top of my head where like you spent all this time looking for this baby and then the baby didn't make it. So Nell is of course like heartbroken and grieving. Um, but Harry is like so sweet to her and like the family sort of like ra rallies around her and it's just, you know, his, his aunt Maud who like knew from like the beginning that Harry was in love with her. And he's like, no, like I'm just like looking out for her and like, you know, she's being treated badly by this woman and, and, you know, like, I'm gonna, like, save her from this woman because, uh, you know, it's the gentlemanly thing to do and blah, blah, and Aunt Maud's just nodding and smiling, like, uh-huh, uh-huh. So clearly you love her and want to marry her. Um, but, so, yeah, uh, Nell thinks that her baby's dead and, um, Sir Irwin is now dead, but one of Sir Irwin's, um, servants, uh, tells Harry that um, that uh, Nell's father actually did come to him 
with the baby and was like, you know, this is your baby. You should, you know, provide for it and, and take care of it. And Sir Irwin took the baby and then had the servant go give it to this baby broker, this baby seller by the docks or something, who was like this horrible woman who would like take these babies, well, not take them, like they, they were like given to her by like women in um, dire straits and um, who were not able to take care of their babies. But the woman was just doing it for the money basically because when the women were not like able to come back for their babies she would sell the babies and so she was just doing it for the money she didn't take care of the babies you know some of them were like sickly and like so malnourished and it was just like a horrible horrible place but Harry finds baby Tori there and he 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 all he's had this complex of like always feeling like low on himself and feeling like he's he's scum and and um dealing like with his hang up about like being a bastard and because his father uh rejected him and um marcus the oldest brother um that pretty much none of the other brothers brothers like because he was a he was just, you know, he, he followed the, the father's example and like rejected them too. Um, sort of just, and um, there's this one like little subplot where like you see sort of like where Harry's drive to sort of like get into society and like marry a rich a woman comes from where he had fallen in love with a rich girl and you know, uh, he, you know, gave his whole heart to her and like was totally in love with her. And she pretty much just when, when he like wanted to marry her, she completely like rejected him and like laughed in his face. And um, just there, there's some point where she, um, the girl's father, and I think his, has, has him beaten and whipped um, and the girl, and the girl sees it, her name was Athena, and Athena sees it and is, like, smiling and, like, laughing at him, like, the whole time, so that builds, like, this rage in him of, like, I am gonna be good enough, I am gonna, like, get into the society, like, no matter what, and that's why, like, I have to marry this, like, society woman, this rich, noble woman, even if I don't love her, because this society has always looked down uh, on me, and, I'm gonna be one of them and blah 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 so that that was like Harry's deal and um once he knows that like Nell is like this noble woman and you know he's convincing himself that like he's gonna marry her uh even though like he is in love with her but of course is denying it and is all like I'm just marrying her to like in society blah blah um so he still has like that that low low feeling about himself and so he can't he feels that like he can't be worthy of her and he can't um admit his love for her because he's not worthy to do so um unless he is able to bring baby tori back to her back to nell so after like Nell has been like been grieving like the fact that like her daughter's dead um and Harry's like doesn't tell Nell this but he keeps looking for the baby and um after like the servant tells him you know Sir Irwin gave gave her to this rich not this rich bitch but this bitch by the docks um and so Harry doesn't tell Nell this because he does, if if it's a if it's a false if it's a false lead then he doesn't want to like get her hopes up and get her um, disappointed again. So without telling her, he goes to the docks and finds Baby Tori, and there's this beautiful scene, like oh my god, there's this beautiful scene where he brings Baby Tori home to Nell. Y'all, I cried, I cried. It was so beautiful. Uh, um, 
And there's this like wonderful scene where like Marcus apologizes to Harry for like how he treated him. Um, and sort of like that. He doesn't like excuse it, but he's like, you know, I, I thought that I had to be like my father for sort of him to to love me and to to keep me and you know like i didn't want to be treated like y'all and so harry kind of like makes his peace with um with marcus and then he and nell get married and it's beautiful it's so like oh i love this book i loved this book so much all the stars all the stars all the stars for this book all of it. Love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. Um, so what am I reading right now? I don't have anything new on uh, ebook yet. And I don't have anything new on Audible. But in my paperback, I am almost halfway through Pam Jenoff's The Orphan's Tale. Now, if you remember in my previous, uh, in my December wrap-up video where I was talking also about the best books of 2021, The Diplomat's Wife by Pam Jenoff was my best book of 2021. Um, I'm liking this one. I'm not liking it sort of like as much because it's sort of set during World War II and there's it's sort of set like in the circus world and I'm not really so much for the circus, but um, I, I'm loving the friendship sort of between Noah and Noah is a girl. I don't know if that's how you pronounce it, but it's N-O-A and um, Astrid. Um, and I'm, I'm really liking it so far. Um, so that's going to be it for this week's video. Um, so follow me on Twitter at twitter.com slash author e. Like my Facebook page at facebook.com slash author e. And I will talk to you guys next time. Bye.